in that this lady had got married and then they tried for pregnancy i think for so many years so about 10 years or so and only to come to the final conclusion that her tubes were blocked so without blocked tubes there was divorce the man couldn't take it again so the divorce and she had to move from the home so she told herself that no more relationship no more marriage she had given up and i'm sure it is happening to some of us who are listening to us you are already giving up like Auntie Tess is saying it's expensive like you're saying that is the only option you have so you are about giving up but wait right there don't give up because there is hope and that is where we are going to now that is why you need to listen to this and know that something can be done how is it going everybody i promised us that we'll be talking about what is next after being told you have a blocked fallopian tube in our previous video we talked about some causes and what really happens for normal pregnancy to take place Actually, we've been planning this video. We actually recorded a video, but we had issues with the video. So this another time we've gone with a resource person and I am so privileged that she's made another time for us so that we could record this video together. Now let's meet a resource person to know who really she is. So we have Mrs. Theresa Watimamanti. I call her Auntie Tess, like she's popularly known as Auntie Tess. Auntie Tess has been a fertility nurse at the Medifem Specialist Hospital for about 14 years. She's been at the fertility center there and one of the people that started the hospital actually. And she's a clinical nurse educator at the University of Ghana School of Nursing and Midwifery. Free. She's a certified family life counselor. It means we are not talking to the wrong person at all. You want to stick around and let's watch and understand what really would happen if you've been told you have a blocked tube. What are the chances? What you can do? What you shouldn't do? How you should go about things? And it's a privilege to have you here today, Auntie Thess. Thank, Thank you so you. much for giving us the second chance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so, you. Well, let's start our conversation. I, I think I promised our viewers that we're going to expand or talk more about block tubes and what really are the options for someone that has a block tube. So my first question is maybe let's just start from here. That so someone that has a block tube, is there any option at all? Like does the person have any hope? Because most people when they hear your tubes are blocked, they, they just die off, like they get so sad they don't know what the next way is or the next option. So maybe you should give us a clear okay. idea of Thank that. you. Thank you very much. My sweetheart, that I always call midwife Ajo. We are privileged to have you. And viewers, you agree with me that we are blessed to have such a wonderful midwife to, to be an educator and work us through fertility issues and things about women. And I love it, and that's what I eat. So you are always welcome. Yeah, never mind that your video corrupted or whatever, but it is all good. Maybe this is the second time that we are going to do it even better. So viewers, you're welcome. And I love to have you all. Like she said, always at your service. You try to break things down as much as possible for you to understand. So the question is, if you have been told that your blocks are your tips are blocked, sorry, then what next? I always say that the word comes out as blocked tubes, but you need to think about it, look into it, find a place to accept it. And I don't mean that you should always take it at cut and stone that that is the final thing so in our part of the world I know we live in a world of spirituality our spiritual background influences everything we hear so the first step I will tell you and she told you that as a Christian whose report do you believe it should come first but then we are both physical and spiritual beings 
So in as much as grace has been given to others to do investigations and know what is wrong with our physical beings, you should find a way to accept it. Then when I, what I mean by accepting is, there are so many factors, as she earlier elaborated on, that can cause that. But we shouldn't also forget that there are so many unexplained factors. There are factors that is beyond you and I's control. That it could not be by any fault of yours, but you find yourself in that situation that the blocks are not functioning as you should, or it's blocked by the investigations from the doctors. And so from there, if you are able to reconcile yourself as to why the issues could have come, even if it's from your, I'm, I'm saying quote and quote, it's from something you did that caused infections, they do not do but brought infections, um, childhood issues and all those things that brought it. There is a way out. That is when you take the step of knowing what next. What next is that we need to understand how childbirth occurs. And I know that most of the time before you come to that diagnosis, it means you are one way or the other looking for a child. And just when you are thinking you have breasts, excuse me to say, you have your uterus, you have your vagina, you ovulate and everything, and only for a doctor to tell you that it's your blocked, your tubes, it's blocked. And because of that, you can't have a child. So then, let's th think about it. Are there any other things in relation to childbirth that fallopian tubes are a, a, a factor in it that when you are told it's blocked, what can you do next? So when your tubes are blocked, all hope is not lost. At first, when we were having babies, it was only natural. And it got to a point that people were thinking that if you don't have a natural birth, like give birth through vagina, then you are not counted among the women. Yeah. But God being so good, the sciences and development has come for us to appreciate that, oh, so after all, you can have vaginal birth and the baby can also be removed from abdomen. And so it comes to the same thing. So those days, people whose tips were blocked, what were they doing? Maybe they were left permanently barren, but you and I are blessed. When your tubes are blocked, there is a surgical procedure that can be done for you to have your child. Um, not until... Okay, so no, I'm not, I don't want to just sure. stop the yeah, conversation here, but Auntie Tess says something that I want to draw your attention sure. to. So she said, you can still ovulate, and it's so true. Yeah. You can ovulate if your tubes are blocked. Everything will be fine. You menstruate, you ovulate. It's only when it's time for you to get pregnant that you might now find out that you have blocked tubes. Yeah. So these things are very important. These are real things we are talking to you about. Yeah. Real life experiences. If you are not experiencing or you've not experienced it, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Yeah. People are battling with these issues. That's why you should start sharing this video. Immediately you get here, start sharing it to anyone you know it would be of great help to now. And it says, you were talking about how that there are options. You said, there's, you said something surgical. Yeah. Now, what is the surgical thing that can be done for someone okay. that has a block So tube? the options that you have when you are first diagnosed as block tubes depends on your age. Okay. If the age is let's say less than 35 years and you have a, you happen to have a doctor who is very willing to do it a tuboplasty can be done there's something we call tuboplasty i have seen it being done for patients and uh, they've had children after that those they work on the tubes so they surgically unblock the tubes they clear that blockage from the tips and then give you a chance a year or two to see what happens so tiboplasty is there it can be done okay, okay. um and then also when it is not um within the doctor's discretion looking at all parameters that tiboplasty will help that was when now we do the function of the tube in the lab so Let's say, as you said, the person has eggs, womb, and everything. But let's get to understand it this way. That pregnancy could only occur where 
when fertilization occurs in the tube. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when the sperms are deposited in the vagina, the sperms rush into the womb, goes into, if you remember the diagram she, she showed you, it goes into the tube and the, sperm, the, the egg is released from the arm of the womb. That's the, the ovaries. And then the egg is also transported through the tube. So the two meet in the tube and fertilize. When they fertilize in the tubes, it takes about three to five days for that fertilized egg, which is called an embryo, to move back into the womb. So what is happening here is, even if you have a womb, you have a vagina, you have the eggs, everything, the sperms are available, but the tubes is blocked. Then it means that egg that has been fertilized cannot come cannot be transported back into the uterus. And that is where we are saying that the tube is blocked. So what science is doing now is do that function of the tube in the lab for you. So now it's going to be that we take your sperm, we get the egg through what we call, that is what we call in vitro fertilization. The in vitro fertilization is, is just that we are doing the function of your tube in the lab for you. So we are mimicking whatever nature would have done naturally within you in the lab for you to have fertilization. And then when you now have the egg fertilized, which is about three to five days, some doctors transfer it third day, others do it five days. So it depends on the discretion of the doctor and the protocol. Then that embryo will now be picked from the lab, from the tube in the lab, and inserted into the womb, where I earlier said that naturally it would have come back to stay in the womb, in the, in the endometrium, or in the middle of the womb, literally, and then grow. So these are the two options. Either they open it naturally for you, for you to try natural conception, or they do the function of the tube in the lab for you. And he says, so can the tube be washed? Because people say, oh, they said they, say they want oh. to wash my <laughs> tube for me. And if they wash it, people even say it's very painful. Yeah. So maybe you should give us a little. Okay, so the tube washing is actually a diagnostic procedure. Okay. If I say a diagnostic procedure, that is when they will get to know. It is a test that they use to determine whether the tube is open. Okay. So in itself, it's not a washing. Yeah. As said, as is being perceived. Mm -hmm. So, and there are different types of uh, way of assessing if the tube is blocked or open. Okay. So, you know, in the hospitals, we start doing things from the simple ones. Yeah. In simple ones, means less expensive also. Mm -hmm. So, you might achieve same results, but the cost involved. So, there are different types. So, they would just do what everyday life the doctors are doing as um, womb washing or hydrosapigogram. Yes. Yes. So they come, you're using hydro because they use fluid mm -hmm. plus other antibiotics and passes it through the tube mm -hmm. to see if it can go through. Okay. Okay. And an active tube resists that. Okay. Okay. So if the tubes, excuse me to say, it's not blocked, but very active, it means when that fluid is passing through, the pain will be very severe because the tube is resisting it. It is active. It has its patent. So it will allow, it, you know, like the, the, the fluid passing through, it causes a lot of trauma. But if it's blocked, it could be that they are passing the fluid in, they are just lying there. Oh. They are not feeling anything because it's not going. At which point is it blocked? It could be blocked very close to the uterus, or it could be blocked very close to the fall uh, fallopian tubes and uh, the ovaries. ovaries. Okay, so if it's at the distal end, maybe it will be painful to a point. Oh. Okay, if it's blocked very early, it is not going. So they normally use some of the level of pain on your reaction to determine because that one is a blind procedure it is not done under any ultrasound oh okay it's so clear because <laughs> a lot of people when you tell them to go for the h, uh, the HMT. h 
S G. So confusing. Let me say it again. H S G. It's one word. Yes. So certain. Yeah. So when they are being told to go for that, they are like, oh, midwife, we've heard that it's very painful. Sure. So anti test has helped us right now. It's painful because it's testing up like the uh, fallopian tubes. If they are very good, as she's saying, that's when you will feel the pain. Yeah. It means that it's really working. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So anti test. Now, you've talked about one option. Yeah. Is that you want to come in yes. with something? Yes. So, so the other um, way to test it is the laparoscopy. Okay. So the laparoscopically, uh -huh. what they are doing is now they are using something like a, a camera, okay. internal camera, uh -huh. literally. I like to make things very literal so, so that you and I would understand it. I don't want to use the medical diagnosis a lot. So they are using something like a camera uh -huh. and they don't cut you. It's not like a big surgery. They just use it through your umbilicals, a punch, it just, it just a way to have internal visualization. Mm -hmm. Then this time, they are instilling the fluid all right, but they can see with their own eyes how the fluid is moving. Okay. And with those, they put you to sleep. Okay. Because like I told you, if it's active, you'll be in pain. Mm -hmm. So this one, you will go off sleep. And the doctor will visualize the movement of the fluid through the tubes until it comes out. Okay. And now we'll give a report whether the tube is opened or blocked. Wow. So that is a laparoscopy. Wow, wow, wow. There are others they do with scan. Mm -hmm. Not laparoscopy, but high cost. When they are using the fluid, they will be scanning. Okay. To see also how it comes out. So there are various options. But like I said, uh, HSG is less expensive, mm -hmm. but you have to bear the pain. Yeah. Her laparoscopy... It's expensive, not too painful, not, too painful. Okay. not painful, okay. actually, yes. And some people also can't stand the fact that they are going to be put to sleep. Mm -hmm. So some people also prefer to be in the pain and yeah. see whatever they are doing. Okay. So they are advancing. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so now <laughs> this is really educative, sincerely. Now, so you, you've talked about the in vitro mm. and you said that's one of the ways. So after doing that, um, we realize that you are pregnant or fertility has taken, uh, fertilization, fertilization has, has taken place. place, then pregnancy will continue. Uh -huh. Now, what are that, is that the only option that there is, like, apart from the... Oh, for, 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 for fact, if your tips are blocked and all parameters are okay, meaning you have eggs, your womb and the lining and everything is okay, you have good sperms, then, quote unquote, your only option is that the function of the tube should be done in the, in, in the lab for you. Okay. IVF is your, is, is your option. Okay. That one, there's no two ways about that. Your tubes are blocked. The only option that can ensure that you have a child is doing in vitro fertilization. That's why in vitro fertilization, when it started, they were calling it tube, tube baby. Because they are doing the function of the fallopian tube in the lab. So they are calling it tube baby. Okay, uh -huh. so that is it. When people hear IVF, lots of things come to their mind. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, IVF. IVF. You know, IVF in our minds. Okay, so IVF is in vitro fertilization. Mm -hmm. Okay. In our minds, IVF comes with costs, sure. work, sure. too much attention. Sure. Is it true? <laughs> like, like, is it true that IVF is work? It is expensive. Mm -hmm. It needs you need to virtual, fact, literally carry yourself like an egg. Like, what yeah, really is fact, it true? Like, <laughs> in fact, it is. Okay. IVF. Whenever you mention an IVF, it's like you are now going to invade the person's private reproductive private system. Okay. Things that we 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 do it naturally without anybody seeing you are going to ex expose yourself it's a fact but then me, why am i saying that but when you sleep with your husband nobody sees the sperm coming you don't do anything to have that coming yeah. you enjoy it's a pleasure then it comes isn't it okay now when you are going to talk about ivf mm -hmm. now your sperm has to be seen okay your has your partner's sperm has to be seen mm -hmm. And it cannot be seen 
just by as if you are urinating, mm -hmm. it has to go through a bit of masturbation. Or arousal. Yes, or arousal being held by you, the lady, or but it cannot be a penetration. Okay. And then you produce the sperms out. One. Now you to the lady. Mm -hmm. You have to go through minor uh, procedures for the eggs to be retrieved. Mm -hmm. You receive few injections, um, stimulation. Mm -hmm. We have to stimulate. Now, because we have to go through an IVF, mm -hmm. we need quite a number of the eggs to be retrieved. Okay. Because naturally, that is where people have a problem that if I'm going to do an IVF, it means they are going to destroy most of my eggs. No. Naturally, that's what happens. For every one ovulation that you think you have, releasing an egg, one or two, about 30 to 15 of the eggs are released mm -hmm. and are not able to fertilize. Mm -hmm. If they are not able to even mature, mm -hmm. let alone to fertilize. Mm -hmm. So it's almost the same thing. But this one, the natural hormones that God gives you to mature one or two, because we want to maximize your chance, we give you added hormones. That is through the injections. And then it matures the eggs that would have diminished okay. to be more matured. Then we retrieve where we can maximize it and then fertilize it to see the ones that will be able to stand the fertilization. And then out of that, we pick some, save some, transfer some to you and see what will happen. Presently, if we transfer one or two to you mm -hmm. and it doesn't um, come out successful as pregnancy, mm -hmm. the ones that we did, that, uh, the extra ones we had that has been stored will be there for you and it can be used without you going through that stress again. Wow. <laughs> okay, we started from somewhere and yeah. we are building up to somewhere. Okay. So this is how far we are going. So I would say that... Um, in vitro fertilization now has become part of assisted pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So we are, when we are talking about assisted pregnancy, a lot of things go under it. But when we are talking about IVF, then that is just an option to ensure that we do the function of the tube in the lab for you. Okay. Wow. And it has, you, so you talked about how that... Um, the function of the tube is done in the lab. Yeah. What are the chances? Is it that when I do IVF, I'm going to definitely have a baby? You know, you said something that even helped me to understand how that most IVFs end up, uh, most people after IVF end up having twins, mm -hmm. triplets. Sure. Yeah, because they are, they are ovaries, are get, like they get a lot of eggs and mm -hmm. they try to fertilize mm -hmm. most of them. Yeah. So is it every IVF that ends in a pregnancy? That no. ends in a successful pregnancy. No, no, uh -huh. no, no. So, no. That is why, um, to for for you to assess assisted pregnancy, you need a lot of counselling. Okay. You need to understand that naturally, it is not every sex that ensures pregnancy. Okay. That's where we should start from. In even when pregnancy occurs in a natural sex, it is not every time that it goes to term like you are able to deliver that baby okay there are miscarriages here and there in between okay. the same thing happens what science is doing is just mimicking natural so it's one in about ten, it's about one in three or 30 percent chance um in very 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 advanced way that you can get it about 50 50 but it is not more than even 50 percent that when you do an IVS, IVF you have a child wow. no it is yes fertilization I can say as for the fertilization there's a higher chance that the eggs will be fertilized but because other components come into play your hormones come into play the tube the womb itself come into play even your emotions come into play the stress come into play so the fact that you have a fertilized egg doesn't mean that straight away once you have a fertilized egg and we transfer it then you're going to get pregnant no it doesn't work like that wow. a lot of things goes into it so you need to uh, uh, to go through uh, counseling before during and after 
and have that heart i would say to try about three times so whenever you are thinking of an ivf tell yourself that um i'll give myself about three chances to decide what next so that i don't jump from hospital to hospital no it's not helpful wow wow so we are giving ourselves three chances if you are having ivf in mind but is ivf very expensive and it is yes it is it is it is very expensive i won't miss my ways and especially this time because um like i said the hormones that we use for stimulation and preparation and all that are not made here and they have a very short um shelf life when you bring it you can't keep it for long so you need to keep importing so as and when you import and the dollar rates affect it that is it so the rate hasn't actually changed the fee hasn't actually changed from the time we started IVF but the dollar influence has changed the amount that we pay that is how I say it because that is why most of the institution quote it in dollar and then you give it CD equivalent in that by the time you go and buy the reagent the price is up oh okay okay that is where the cost is it is not most of the things are not from here in ghana you might have your doctor here in ghana but he doesn't have control over the machines he doesn't have control over the reagents so it's, it's expensive wow. yes it's expensive if i should give you a range of course if you so want it i don't know if they but then I, I, let's leave that. I think our viewers should just have an idea of the cost. Mm -hmm. if, they, if you could give us an idea. Um, I would so that say they can that. Start planning. If you have such an issue, start planning. And okay. So I would say that for um, inflation sake, let me quote it in dollars. But as we said, it's about $6,500 wow. to ensure one IVF. And imagine the rate at which we are going with the dollar. Wow, interesting. So, Auntie Tess, looking at this, can an average Ghanaian go for an IVF? I'm not sure an average Ghanaian that has gone, uh, that has had or has been told the person has blocked hmm. fallopian tubes can go through an IVF or can go for an IVF. You know, in one of our videos, I think, I don't know if it was a conversation we're having, I think you were trying to tell me that when you are told you have blocked tube. You don't just take the report like that, okay? Yeah. Go elsewhere. So let's do this at about two or three yeah. places to be sure that the tubes are really blocked, yes. you know? And even if it's one tube that's blocked, you have the other. Yes. People have a topic and yeah. are able to give birth with sure. the other. Sure. Okay, so you don't just take one blocked tube um, diagnosis from a hospital and just make it like you come home you come and cry so you you are it has just spoiled every aspect of your life no yeah. so let's try elsewhere yeah. before you are about three places yeah. then we can be firm on that diagnosis and why would we say that yeah in that you see the diagnosis that we're talking about yeah. suppose the person was using an hsg mm -hmm. to diagnose you and your pain threshold was very high and so you were resistant and the thing that didn't even go through but because you were so in so much in pain, mm -hmm. the doctor's discretion ended up saying you are your tips are blocked. Okay. You can go elsewhere and they will do laparoscopy and say, oh, but it's not true, it's opened. Okay. Okay? And factors that blocks it also. If it's just an infection that has temporarily blocked it, maybe during the uh, blowing or the HSG, mm -hmm. it dislodged. Okay. Okay, and you could have, and it's been happening. That is why people were thinking that the HSG itself is like womb washing. Because people were getting results even after that. And people were getting results that after the HSG, they were told the tubes were blocked. They were trying to get money maybe for the IVF. By the time they realized they were yeah. pregnant. So it's like that fluid has dislodged that temporal blockage, depending on what it is. I'm saying it's unknown. Sometimes it's unexplained. So just by those acts, then you have what you want. So, like we are saying, it is a diagnosis, but it depends on how the person is diagnosing it, what he or she is seeing and concluding. 
So if you have one or two uh, um, opinions, second or third opinions, at least you now settle that that is it. Yeah. And then, like you're saying, an average person, yeah. average Ghanaian, of course, it's expensive though, but I can tell you that average Ghanaian also who is desperate for a child can do it. Can do it. Wow. Wow. So I think um, about a month or two ago, a lady called, she said she's a teacher and she she got married not long ago she realized that they, she's been told her tubes are blocked mm. i just told her she should repeat the test mm -hmm. elsewhere and get back to me and wh while we're talking i told her oh then if it's really true she need to consider ivf and immediately she was like hey how much do they pay me before i would mm. think about ivf i told her she should start saving small small you know these things it's all about how you want it or how like if you really want yeah. it when tubes are blocked, we earlier said that don't stick to one um, diagnosis mm -hmm. as tubes are blocked. We are saying that for a fact because we have seen people getting pregnant with reports of blocked tubes. Okay. And that is where I'm coming in with this testimony of someone I had an encounter with. In fact, I had about two or three encounters that are very real that it happened. But let me share those with you. And from that, we all have some hope that when tubes, when you are diagnosed as block tubes, that is not all lost. Mm -hmm. There's something that you, you have to do, a God can do for you. Mm -hmm. In that, this lady had got married and then they tried for pregnancy, I think for so many years, so about 10 years or so. And only to come to the final conclusion that her tubes were blocked. So without block tubes, there was divorce. The man couldn't take it again. So they divorced and she had to move from the home. So she told herself that no more relationship, no more marriage. She had given up. And I'm sure it is happening to some of us who are listening to us. You are already giving up. Like Auntie Tess is saying, it's expensive. Like you are saying, that is the only option you have. So you are about giving up. But wait, right there. Don't give up because there is hope. And that is where we are going to now. That is why you need to listen to this and know that something can be done. This lady mm -hmm. who closed her mind on that was staying. And then men would not let her stay. They were trying to win no matter what. So it just happened that one time. A man who had told herself that come what may, me, I will marry this woman. And this woman will say no. So one way or the other, I would say that it was <laughs> an arranged rape. <laughs> because it was really against the woman's will. Okay. To have that sense. Because to her, she had given herself to Christ and wouldn't like to have a sex outside marriage for any reason. But then, if she marries and if she you knows that this is her fate, why? But this man did it. And before the woman, and she had closed her mind. In fact, she did it. She was so emotional about it. She had to call me. She cried at Auntie Tess. Why? This had happened to me. In about four months' time, because she knows that her tubes are blocked and it's not possible for her to get pregnant. Four months, that's when she realized that, ah, something is not going on right with me. And then that was when she came to the hospital I met her. We did a scan and she was pregnant. Oh. And now she has a baby. Aww. And now the man has married her. Aww. Okay, so why I'm saying that um, hmm, when you get to that crossroad where there seems to be no hope, please stay right there and know that <laughs> uh, hope comes from God. Yeah. And then the human system and the body we have it's, it's, it's somebody who made it and has the spare pass. So start with your mind. Let your mind and your emotions tell you that it is a diagnosis of the limitation and understanding of doctors and uh, hospital personnel who has been blessed to do the findings and know. But there is a God who created you. There is God who knows why you have to go through that. And I can tell you for a fact that 
this is not the only incident I'm telling you. People have had that news. I have witnessed, me, I have witnessed a caesarean session where a doctor was telling me that this is how block tubes look like. I hope you get what I'm telling you. I am assisting a doctor to perform a caesarean session where we take baby out of the womb. So I can see with my naked eyes the womb and the tubes. And I was being told that these tubes are blocked. Mm. But ask yourself, how come that person got pregnant? Mm -hmm. I have also witnessed someone that in our own hospital, we did a, a ectopic pregnancy. That is, she had sapinjectomy. Mm -hmm. She had it twice. Oh. We did it for them. And then when they were about to leave the hospital, they said, ah, so Auntie Teresa, for all this trouble we went through, infertility and all this and having the chance to conceive now, now our tubes too has been cut off. So we don't have any hope. Interestingly, that day, all that I told them was that it is the final say of doctors. But if you have an atom of faith, something can happen yeah i am telling you now 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 i speak and if they can even look at this video they have a chance to see this video they will all testify to what i'm saying that it is true they eventually came back pregnant interestingly not knowing that when the doctors were thinking they had operated on different tubes they had operated on same tube oh and so she got pregnant and it was such a blessing. So, like you earlier said, if one tube is not working and one is working, you can have as many, as many children as possible. Mm -hmm. But now, the diagnosis, sometimes, the HSG might not even be able to determine which tube actually is blocked. And then they come out with blocked tubes. Please, there is hope out there for you. Yeah. That hope comes with peace of mind. It comes with trust in God. It comes with persistence. Today I will try and try until I can satisfy myself with God that this is not the way to have it. It is possible. All hope is not lost. We do our best, but God has the final say. And wow. that is why you need to go through an extensive counseling, a peace of mind, stress-free, and see what God can do. I am here with you. <laughs> we are here with you. I hope it's not lost. Wow, God wow, bless you. wow, wow. So, Auntie Tess, <laughs> let's conclude. Let's conclude. So, what sure. are your concluding thoughts? I think our viewers have learned a lot from this video. Keep commenting. Let's share this video. Please ask your questions. We are here. We'll definitely answer them. Okay. So, Auntie Tess, what are your concluding thoughts on all we've said? Is there anything you want to add to it? Okay, so concluding it, I would say that um, fertilization, reproduction, infertility, assistance, pregnancy, and all that are available for you. There are lots more in store for you when it comes to childbirth and um, reproduction. Just tell yourself that you need to find the right place, the right people, the right counseling, the right, the, the peace of mind, the right set of mind to know that whatever you set your heart on, the Lord will let you have it. Children are a blessing, but they're not a product of marriage. Take it like that, that they are a blessing. So the human body contains the spiritual beings. So when you are looking for a child, first to know that it is not only for you, but it's for the world, the nation, what that child will do for the world. And so you will go beyond that to explore the opportunities available for you. Money is an aspect, but money can be lost also. And I will also speak to the, take this opportunity to speak to friends and viewers who when people are in this situation would look at them as they don't know what they are using their money for. Now, I think you, if you are listening to us, you realize that paying one school fees for 10 years is not equivalent to looking for just one child. It takes a lot of money and a lot of emotions. We are here with you 
and I will say that so we meet again. Stay blessed and ask all your questions and I'm sure that together we would answer you and help you go through and have a child. Bless you. Oh, Auntie Tess, thank you so much. God bless you all for watching. Keep watching. Stay blessed. See you in our next video. Bye. <laughs>